the most excited I am is for trash talking whoever participates in it. This is terrible news and this means if you're still keeping your investment in UK real estate, cut your losses now. Hello and welcome to your weekly news dump. My name is Arjem, I'm CEO of Accord Properties. And here we talk about news in Dubai's real estate, Dubai's life, world and Dubai economic news and literally everything I found interesting this week. Please like and subscribe, follow us on all of our social media. That really helps us. Let's get into the news. So this week, in, you know, in my life, in our company's life, being pretty steady, very active. Uh, me personally, I finally decided I'm staying for the next year in the same apartment I lived for a previous year. I'm just extending my rent. I'm not moving. You know what? I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. The reason is simple. Prices went up ridiculously everywhere and I don't have time for for a move very simple reasons but I'm actually pretty happy with this decision because where I live now is Dubai Creek and Dubai Creek is a very very cool place I mean the area is developing really well and you get a lot of activities which I don't get to use because I only come back home to sleep and uh, spend the rest of the time roaming around Dubai doing other stuff. The other part of me being way too busy, the other issue is I need to fix my car and I don't. And it's something to do with the steering rack. So if there's no news next week, just know I lost a wheel somewhere on the highway, crushed and burned. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I need to fix my car, but I don't have time and opportunity to do that. And that is annoying. Even more annoyingly, I wanted to trade in my car to just buy a new car <laughs> and exchange that car for a new car, which is fixed. Because that's quicker than fixing it, right? Um, apparently, I lost 70 grand in value of my car over a year. And this is outrageous. I'm driving this car until it rots now. I'm getting my money worth out of it. Otherwise, I've been moving around the Dubai much more this week, much less office time. I um, uh, had a good friend here who wanted to see some properties, so I came out in person and took him across the whole town. And it was great to get an update on the prices myself. So. Once again, budget is great, half a mil. Requirements are great, just great views, one bedroom. It's really, really hard to find a good one bedroom or studio apartment in Dubai with a good view. Because for some reason, Dubai's developers decide that only larger apartments are going to have better views. Although it's not the necessarily most profitable way. People are ready to overpay by a significant margin for a good view in one bedroom and studios. And every developer who done those projects where you can get a one bedroom with an iconic view made a lot of money on their one bedrooms. And their one bedrooms are usually solid 20% more expensive on a secondary market if they have a good view. So it's a good investment. I'm not sure why MR doesn't pick up on that all that well. It's frankly confusing. Um, but this is the rather young market for you. They're still working out the kinks. Otherwise, Dubai is getting busier and busier. Traffic is getting worse. I'm actually now getting more work done in the car because I'm spending more time stuck in traffic than I spent driving. I guess I'm more productive this way, maybe. Anyway, that's the week in 
my life. Not nothing outstanding, nothing very special. Let's get into the news. This week we had uh, 2.5 billion dollars worth of transactions made in Dubai's real estate. All I I'm asking for is 10% of the market. Pretty please. If I do that, I'll be just fine. But jokes aside, um, looking at the numbers, there's a lot of large transactions this week. It seems like people waited through the summer, seeing the markets go strong into the next season and decided to pull the trigger, realizing that by New Year's time, the price will be higher and it's time to buy now. Um, there's a number of very, very expensive land plots, a couple of unique properties and villas, and a lot of normal stuff, of course, but the number is so large this time, partially because it's included unusual amount of huge land transactions. Uh, the land transactions I'm seeing are in... Uh, a few moments later. The largest transactions in, transaction is in Jumeirah Second. That's a land plot. I assume it's a developer paying 100 million dirham to build a smaller development because it's not a lot of land for that money in Jumeirah. The other ones were just north of JVC, right next to the Jumeirah Golf Estates. Jumeirah Golf Estates are great. They're very high-end, very upscale developments. It's mostly villas. It's mostly golfing-oriented kind of area. And it's extremely expensive. And even if you got the money, not much is coming onto the market. It's always a chase to get those ones. Um, and right across the road from that, there's um, a few moments later. Al Hibai fourth and first and second, so the whole Al Hibai area, and it's fairly green and it's fairly nicely developed. But it's right next to JVC. It's out of the way from everything nice. So I'm not sure why those transactions are so huge. I think it's a significant amount of land being purchased for developments, and we're actually running out of plots in JVC, funnily enough. So people are moving one step further into the desert, building more, building more developments. It's essentially just developers investing um, into the new land for development. That's how we get those numbers this week. It doesn't necessarily show us that the market is aggressively growing as much as it shows us that developers still strongly believe in long-term demand and preparing for new launches, preparing new land for new projects. So once again, as I usually say, follow the professionals, look what they're doing. Their whole job is to analyze the market and Keep your eye on what they're doing. That will give you a good idea of what to do. So there's a new show on TV, um, a million dollar listing UAE. So they had LA, they had London. This is a TV show about real estate brokers. I've seen a bit of the previous seasons, but the UAE version, I only had a chance to see the trailer yet. There's so much opportunity in this market, especially now. The competition is fierce. And I'm just so excited to call it. In the game of real estate in Dubai, every move counts. When it comes to UAE's top brokers, I'm on top of the food chain. Really, the most excited I am is for trash talking whoever participates in it. Uh, because, quite frankly, I looked at the intro. They picked quite a quite a cast. 
let's just say I'm not sure it's going to be good, but I'm sure it's going to be entertaining. All right. <laughs> and they all, I'm not, that's what fascinates me sometimes is how much of a tool you can be while being a successful broker. Isn't your job to be likable, personable, easy to work with? That's the whole broker's work. And I'll be honest, maybe I'm here in the minority, but I would never work with either of those guys, either of them, because, well, first of all, look at the outfits. The only fitting suit to be seen in the trailer is worn by a British guy. But honestly, he's British. Um, for a British person, I think fumbling your suit should constitute a loss of citizenship. Suits are supposed to be worn correctly. At least he knows that, but clearly he's a bit of a character. Let's be nice. Let's say he's a bit of a character still. But... Props to him, suit is nice. The rest are wearing them one size too small, off tones, incorrectly pairing with the footwear, incorrectly styling them with accessories, just like they've seen a suit from from a far away. They looked at the magazine with binoculars from 100 meters away. They saw a suit and they tried to replicate it. That's what it looks like. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm going going on this tangent about suits, but if you don't know how to wear suits, it's not a big issue. You're apparently selling massive properties. Very clearly, the suits you bought are expensive, albeit terrible. Just come to a good tailor and tell them to tailor your suit correctly. Don't buy the most expensive crap you see in a hanger. Quite frankly, paying a lot for ready-made suit is already a mistake. See, it's supposed to be tailored. It's not a piece of clothing you can buy off the shelf or should buy off the shelf. Otherwise, they obviously playing up it as a, oh, it's such a competitive market and they're trying to steal each other clients. And honestly, I think it's exaggerated. You're still somebody's client in Dubai. The whole community, hopefully, will make sure you never work again. Honestly, there's um, those guys, I've never seen them. Those red carpet walks they use are the worst place to be. It's those launches by developers where they waste a bunch of your time to tell you how great they are. I mean, you got to be, you got to be un virtually unemployed to do anything like that, to go to those events. They are boring. They're wasteful of time. They're annoying to dress for because you need to be all dressed up all day in a black tie attire. So seeing the show from the inside of the industry, it's it looks like a parody of itself, really, but I assume it's great entertainment. <laughs> I'm still going to be watching it. I still wish all the best luck to those guys if the deals are real and hopefully they close on those deals. But most importantly, I mean, you can tell that this show moves and travels with the best property markets in the world. It used to be LA, then it used to be London, and now it's Dubai, right? So what we're picking up from here is I'm doing real estate in the correct location, at least. Maybe the wrong way, maybe those guys know better, but at least in the right location. And that's kind of comforting. <laughs>
we have some media on our social promoting it as well. You can use that to check out the interiors. I absolutely love the place. The editor will con- confirm that I would live there if I could afford it. They simply nailing it. You'd live it? Well, I wish I could afford it. <laughs> Unfortunately, as you can tell, I'm yet to achieve the point where I can buy properties in the what is apparently the most expensive set of hotel apartments in Dubai. Is it going to be worth it? We don't yet know. It's just being launched. We still to see what they're going to have regarding the infrastructure, but what they promise with infrastructure is a Michelin star restaurant, floating parks, incredible cafes, spa, number of pools, gyms. It's a very promising development. Views from it are great. I absolutely love it. I I am a strong believer in its success. And I think the guy who purchased his apartment agrees with me. You would think he agrees with me if he spends that much on that apartment. I wonder if it can go any higher from there. Probably could. But at the end of the day, it's a unique property. It's a penthouse. It's a one of one. So whenever he sells it, he's the one who's setting the price. There will be somebody wanting it no matter what. More of the same in the news. Uh, Dubai is currently the world's busiest luxury property market. This is to be expected. This is what's going on anyway. We all know that Dubai currently leads globally in luxury real estate transactions, partially uh, because it's the only place where the money is welcome and respected, I would say, simply because incredible taxation system, incredibly reasonable KYC and compliance regulations where they exist and they check and they will check your proceedings. They will check where your wealth comes from, but to a reasonable degree where, let's say, if you invested in a U, you probably need to bring over your dead grandma to to get a DNA swab at this point you know unfortunately unfortunately the rest of the world's luxury real estate is not right now on the peak so a lot of investors in luxury real estate are moving away and they're finding dubai as the most promising spot right now and once again it's because of the location it's a hub it's Great place to travel anywhere from. This is very good position for people who are based internationally, who run international businesses. And those are the people who are demanding the luxury real estate and who are the ones using those offerings. You know, those are the end users. And for them, Dubai is a great place to be resident of due to tax system and due to ability to connect. Outside of that, of course, it's because it's much more eager to give permissions for building and not because they skip in safety regulations. It's more because they allow building more and new, where if you go many other places, um, a lot of the fabric of the cities is historical and already very dense. So there's virtually no space for prime real estate and you need to renovate existing buildings and then the standard is not going to be up to what you would expect for the price. So the other thing is you'll see that cash buys, so buying with money outright is dominating the luxury real estate market. People are not getting mortgages, which removes the whole level of complexity for the economy out of there making operations all that much simpler. And although Dubai is actually a place where it's possible to get a mortgage, it's not the easiest place to get a mortgage and not the most forgiving. You miss your payment, you lose your house. Simple as that. It's 
fairly strict on that. But once again, that means there's quite a few properties coming off auctions and we're actually working on the offering for bidding on your behalf on property auctions, knowing your budget. So keep your eyes peeled on that. Once again, a lot of luxury real estate being sold, traded, transacted. Great for me. Great for you. Come and check it out. So this one hits close to home. Well, actually close to the office. On my way to the office, there is such a place which every Dubai resident will know. The place called Hesse Street. And it's a hell on earth. It's a horrible place. Every person who drives in Dubai knows this place because no matter what time of the day you're coming in, you'll get stuck in traffic. If you have to go through Hesse Street, go somewhere else. This is the common wisdom. So the news coming in, they finally expanding. I've already seen some construction signs and preparations, so I expected those news to come out. But yeah, they're doubling the capacity for the Hesse Street, finally. Currently, across the Hesse Street, every area across it is very densely populated, is very actively used. It's an incredibly important arterial road for the city, and it didn't quite keep up with the city's growth, so now it's overloaded with commuters, and hopefully it's going to become wider. Hopefully I'm going to get cut off less there, right? I'm talking about you, Golden Nissan Patrol, talking about you. Yeah, cut me off like that in the evening. Person just going home and minding their own business, cut me off like that. How dare you? <laughs> anyway, once again, uh, great to see that city is trying to keep up with traffic. Would love to see more options for public transport so other people, except for me, don't drive. I'm actually not going to switch to public transport. I'm stubborn like that, but I would love to see others switch so I can drive in less traffic. That's about it. <laughs> Once again, UK house prices, once again, me convincing you, get out of your UK real estate investment. This year, chances are, on average, on average, it could be more, could be less, but could be more. Your house prices, guys, dropped by 4.5%, 4.5% lost in your real estate assets. And Halifax, as a lender, very interested in predicting the future, should be kind of good at it because they haven't gone bankrupt just yet. Um, they're predicting that the rate of falling is going to stay about the same or increase fraud this year until the next September. This is terrible news, and this means... If you're still keeping your investment in UK real estate, you're right now at the choice of cut your losses now or wait until and if the prices recover to that level, to that latest peak level of house prices we've seen recently. I don't think this recovery will be anytime soon. I believe it's... The current downward trend is there to stay much more reliably. It's not going to be like 2008 when prices dropped like 20% a year. It's going to be a much slower trend, but it's going to stay there for a decade or more. That's what I believe. So I believe right now it's a time to calmly, without any panic, exit from your real estate investments in the UK and diversify those investments globally. I'm here obviously interested in offering you the path of looking at UAE, but 
it's not your only option. I'm not going to pretend like it is. Um, real estate in Thailand is booming. It's doing really well right now. Um, if you look at Australia, Australian housing market, last time I checked, seemed quite reasonably doing well. Actually, you can get quite good rates of growth in some African countries, which is the less obvious investment and obviously high risk investment. But once again, high risk, high return and entry ticket is fairly low. So I believe it's worth a try. I'm currently researching what I can do with that and can I offer services there or can I invest my money in there? Um, Dubai is obviously now the world leader in real estate booms, which is great for me and could be great for you. Once again, look at your investments, see what they're doing. Don't hope for the best. Follow what's working. All this holding out hope that things going to fix themselves never done anybody any good. So UK house market is not the market you want to be the last person to exit because you'll take the majority of the loss for others. So consider your options. Consider your options. Do your own research. Reach out to us. We can help you create a diverse portfolio. Once again, thank you for watching our weekly news dump. I appreciate that you made it this far. Once again, if you liked this video, like it. If you want to see more, please subscribe. See you all guys next week. Bye.